Hello and welcome to the Heresy Lodge. I am your host, Dylan Cooper, the constant co-host over here. Gavin Franklin. Guys, we are here this week to review The Lost in the Dam by Mr. Very Guy so. Haley. So pumped for this one. This is a, a very good book. It has a shit ton of storylines, though, so it's going to be interesting how we structure this episode. I won't be surprised yeah. if it's a longer one. Yeah, honestly, like I really want to talk about just the cool parts. <laughs> There's so <laughs> many cool parts. There's like the four book. or five scenes that like were absolutely insane. Um, but there there is a lot to talk about. Yep. Before we get into the book, though, hit us up on our socials. You can find our Discord pinned to our Twitter at Heresy Lodge. You can email us at the Heresy Lodge at gmail.com. Check us out on YouTube at the Heresy Lodge. Uh, we have merch. Check it out. Buy yourself something nice. Uh, those are all the things. Gavin, we got to talk about the most important part of every episode, and that is what you are drinking. Well, although normally you drink shit, so maybe it's more important that I talk about. That's true. Uh, you actually find time to go to liquor stores that are like out of the way. Out of the way. Two miles from my house. Can't wait to do that. <laughs> well, I, I just finished my first Kona Big Wave. I'm <laughs> also about to finish my first beer since we've sat here talking for half an hour. <laughs> yeah. So now I will be opening with this awesome can opener. <laughs> <laughs> can my opener. Kona beer, Big Wave. Kona opener. It's fine. It's fine. 100% I've had Kona on this podcast before. I have. You have. Maybe I haven't. Yeah, maybe you haven't. I have for sure. Love Kona. Kona's a, uh, I honestly think like of, of craft beers, Kona is a, is a top five for me. Really? Love Kona. It's Kona is, I don't even know what type of beer it is. It, it's got all the Hawaii yeah, I think symbols it's a, on it. it. It fucking tells you what it is, Gavin. Fucking read the label. I think it's like golden it, ale. It says, what is a golden ale? It's an ale. That's <laughs> I think it's more of a lager. <laughs> <laughs> What they do is it's, you know, an ale mixed with some piss. I got to I gotta look this up a little bit because I'm pretty sure last time I checked. Uh, yeah, it's all the Hawaii symbols, but it's brewed in. Yeah, I went Colorado. through this whole thing when I yeah. uh, had, we had a whole conversation. <laughs> yeah. uh, we've been here before. <laughs> <laughs> is this deja vu? Oh my goodness. So we're going to be uh previewing buried dagger today. <laughs> <laughs> that was a complete guess. Wouldn't it be wild if that's what it was? I don't think it was. I think it was further back. I think I had a good I might have had a good a better beer for a buried dagger, maybe. Yeah. This was this is uh a good one for sure. Well, I am drinking from a three Floyd's Bruin, a staple of the show, the Crimson Mask. I had never seen this beer around before, so I grabbed it. Guess how much the four pack was, Gavin? $13. 20 fucking dollars. What? For a four pack. And it's not even, it's not like it's like 13% alcohol or anything like that. And it's still stupid expensive. But I splurge for you, motherfuckers. For $5 a beer? I mean, I guess like you pay more off, like if you go out. Still, True. that's kind of crazy. How that's... expensive is like beer or bars? It? I mean, it depends, right? Like, I feel like you can go like some bars and like it'll be like anywhere between three to seven dollars, probably. I feel if like if you're in I'm... California, it's probably 35. I feel like I'm way too old to have this realization, right? It's like, oh yeah, my think gosh. about how much money you've wasted. Beer from the liquor store <laughs> is like way cheaper. Way too big. I could buy a whole fucking like 80 pack of Miller Life, like three dollars. That's nuts. <laughs> I've paid eight dollars. Oh no, I've probably paid 13 14 dollars for a Miller Life before. Yeah, think about like if you go to sports games, yeah, sports or concerts, like it's like anywhere from like 10 to 15 bucks for a beer. That's insane, and it's a 12 ounce, eight ounce glass. I feel Less bad for your twenty dollar purchase. <laughs> yeah, now that everything's been put in perspective, but um, yeah, this is way different than they normally have. Normally, they're big on IPAs, 
But this is an American wild ale brewed with cherries. I'm going to be honest. I've never heard of American wild ale. Don't know what that means. It's wild with a Y and an E. So even more confusing. But it's good. It's like a mix of like a sour almost. We could honestly have a entire like we we could have had a three Floyd's beer on every episode of the podcast and then there'd been a different one. They make Probably. like ridiculous amounts, variety of beer. Yeah, I really want to go to their brewery. I bet you they have so many fucking taps. I was talking about that. I was just thinking about this. I'm like, I wasn't talking about it. I was talking about it in my mind, but just thinking <laughs> about it. It's like the same thing. <laughs> Next time we go to Chicago for like a GT or some big deal. We need to make a stop. Why didn't we stop? We should have stopped at Three Floyds on the way back. Yeah, we should have. We stopped at another brewery. It was okay. but Yeah. So th- it says, this gushing cherry wild ale was brewed with our proprietary mixed yeast culture and fermented and aged in our handmade foders. I don't know what any of those words mean. It sounds sexual. It, I'm turned on. <laughs> You start with gushing. <laughs> you better be. This beer better be doing a lot for you for it's, $5 it's a bottle. <laughs> they need a bigger hole, I think, at the top. <laughs> $5 a bottle. We know what we're getting into here. I mean, I'm paying a premium price. <laughs> uh, so, Lost in the Damned. <laughs> How did we start this? Because there's several storylines going on. We have horses stuff that's happening. We have... Um, fuck. What's his name? Hatsuhira. Yeah, his Kats- storyline. Katsumiro. Katsu- Katsuhira. Yeah. It's Katsuhira. Katsuhira. Okay. Uh, we have Sanguinius in the yeah. Primarchs storyline. We have the fucking Khan in his storyline. We have mm-hmm. it's. There's a lot happening in this book. All right, let's do this before we get started because we'll kind of go through several storylines. I think we're going to miss a lot in this book. And, and, the, and Raptor and Trayvon just have to be okay with it. <laughs> Raptor is a forgiving man. Tra- Tra- Train Tra- wreck. He we'll might show like... up at our houses. <laughs> at the same time, despite living in different states, that's how that's how mad he might get. <laughs> we'll miss like a two sins part of the book that we didn't review. Like, how'd you guys miss that? Why did you guys not talk about that? <laughs> that is literally the most important part of the fucking book. And we're like, <laughs> he took a shit. What do you mean? <laughs> do, you, do you remember the collar? Do you remember the <laughs> smell? It was insane. It's the best part of the book. So I think we should do this. We'll start. Your top two favorite parts of this book. I don't you don't have to go in detail, but, okay. but I wonder if they're the same as my top two favorite parts. Go. Uh, my first one is Abaddon shitting on the fucking chaos primarchs. And I this wasn't shit. this wasn't the same shit that that trademark was talking about. This is a different, this is a different shit on. <laughs> <laughs> and then the fucking the white scars coming out to battle was fucking awesome. Like that like made me so fucking hype. Like I'm like imagining myself as a soldier, and you just see these giant motherfuckers on jet bikes just fucking oh my god, I'll fucking destroy them. That's so crazy because I have two completely different ones. <laughs> I think my favorite part of this entire book was the Khan's speech to Dorn. That's very good. I got like tingles. I was like, oh shit, like is the Khan the best Primarch? Like, what is happening? I mean, the Dorn speech to the citizens is also really fucking good. Yeah, that was pretty nuts. Sanguinius' speech. This I'll, they all give speeches. Mm-hmm. The Khan's speech, though, about like what it means to be doing what they're doing and He's like so anti everything. Uh, we'll get it. We'll break into it a little bit more. That was my first. <laughs> my second favorite was fucking Karn and his battle with the Angron. That was, that was also pretty fucking good. That was pretty fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe. Um, what was it? It was Trey. Trey keeps coming up this episode. He says this is his least favorite book. Did you that I, shit? How? I don't understand. This is Solar like. Solar War sucked. No, okay. Solar War didn't suck. It was okay. First of all, so far, okay. But Lost in the Dam, real good. Real, real good. good. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about let's talk about Katsumaru. Katsumaru. Katsuhira. Katsuhira. 
<laughs> we get a lot of shit for mispronouncing things. Apparently, apparently you say McCrag incorrectly. Macarage? I never, I never heard it. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> I hear it. I know what you're saying. I, that's what the audiobook says. I don't know what they mean. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they need to go back. <laughs> Maybe they need another pronunciation of that. It's um, definitely so, the correct version. Macarage. I've never been know. wrong, like in my life, unless you ask my wife, but she doesn't count. <laughs> It's a good thing she doesn't listen to your podcast. I would have been murdered a long time ago. I would have too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. We would be enjoying ourselves in, in the grace. Uh, so I think, yeah, the story of the, the humans is phenomenal here because it's just a point of view of like, what if you were just a regular fucking dude and this shit's going down? And then they hand you a last rifle and say, stand here for three days straight. <laughs> Point and shoot. <laughs> exactly. Um, and that was one of my favorite parts of this book. He's He was one of my favorite characters because it's cool to see someone like that survive all of it, but but not fully. Like, he's not intact. Yeah. I mean, it's PTSD. Obviously, I feel like everyone <laughs> there has PTSD. I don't know, man. I, the first time you see it, a fucking a star is running at you, and their one bullet from their gun just explodes bodies. You're like, hmm, yep, yep, yep. And he just That's stood there. He kept shooting. If if I just don't move, they won't see me. <laughs> like T Rexes. <laughs> <Don't move>. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, he, he joins and you, we said that he was like a botanist or something. He was just some type of like biology sort of deal. He was sure. Part of. And he, uh, gets, he becomes a part of this unit, but it's, this unit's also been infiltrated by the Alpha Legion. Yep. And it's Alpha Legion we know. Apparently. Ignore, ignore our preview. We know these folks. <laughs> it's uh, they're they're people from Praetorian of Dorne. Now, I don't retract our statement because wouldn't it have been cooler if the people in Praetorian of Dorne were the people in Legion and were the people in the Siege of Terra? I sure would be. <laughs> sure would be. Um, but yeah, so he he becomes friends with the Alpha Legion operatives without knowing their Alpha Legion. And when he gets down to the trenches, they get attacked multiple times. So what are some of the things they face? I mean, it's normal stuff. Demons, beastmen. Beastmen. They go to Age of Sigmar. (laughs) (laughs) They go back to the old world for a while. (laughs) But they get guns. Some Death Guard. I can't imagine. Angron. (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah, Angron yeah just you, run uh, in there. The Angron coming out of the fucking sky was also a pretty cool moment. I'm just like, oh fuck. <laughs> yeah. I read the commentary on that piece, and when they wrote this book, or when they were kind of outlining this book as a team of authors and like what important moments, the only thing, like the very first thing that was written was like, how oh, could it be if like Angron comes from the sky <laughs> like lands? <laughs> like that's the first thing that gets written down. So he like basically framed the book around <laughs> around Angron landing. Angron Superman landing. Yeah. Uh, so he faced some beast man, which I think has got to be so easy. I mean, you have a las rifle. Yeah. Which has got to be better than like a gun. And some fur. Yeah. I mean, they don't even have guns. I'm assuming las rifles are better than our guns today. I would hope so. Even I then, so. I. I can probably go outside and I can shoot an animal and it's probably going to die. That's all the beastmen are. And they they got like axes and horses but they're like, lobbing horses, like, their ships. Big goat people, right? Like, yeah. They're not bears. Like bears can take some bullets. Maybe, but I what's even funny about this is like... Although if they're emus, man, emus, those boys can, those boys can absorb. What type of beasts are we talking about? It absorbs some blows. Like the Ask beastmen, the Australians. The beastmen from like 
old school warhammer they're not that powerful but if we're talking like bear beasts <laughs> that shit's wild <laughs> man they could have been way fucking scarier instead there was like goat people <laughs> Go, goats <laughs> oh there's a we can eat those guys right like that's fine what if I shoot him in the go part? That's pretty much the same as just shooting a human. <laughs> uh, so the funny part about this is like, not only is it like just beastmen, but like they're lobbing like whole ships, like <laughs> taking the ships, like, all right, we're going to crash it into the ground <laughs> and then whoever lives can just climb out, which super unrealistic i think you get you know, a very <laughs> large <laughs> casualty rate around the 90 to 95 percent but hey whatever and then injured you're, you're definitely gonna be injured there's that five percent's not like walking out like all right it's fucking kill some shit yeah, they're not running out they're fucking <laughs> limping they're dying halfway there <laughs> so uh and most of the ships are getting blown up in the atmosphere anyway <laughs> so it's just an unreasonable amount of survivors but regardless then the death guard come death guard are op as shit mortarian makes his entrance and like abaddon is dying just from being around mortarian it's like damn this motherfucker stinks yeah that's literally it <laughs> it's super op yeah oh no everyone but abaddon Axamon was dying. Abaddon was just standing there like, this fucking stinks. Imagine being a Primarch and just literally saying like, my existence in an area kills space marines. Well, so just kind of going into like what Abaddon was saying when he was just shitting on all the Primarchs. He was like, look, you're chosen. Fuck that. First off, Angron all he fucking does is kill everything around him. Oh, super fucking useful if it's your fucking enemy. Mm -hmm. Not your fucking friends. Like this, is, He just keeps killing his own people. Super great. That's what I want to be like. Or it could yeah. be Fulgrim, where I just fuck everything to death for no reason. Yeah. Or, hear me out. Are you ready? I can be a smelly motherfucker and kill everything around me too. Cool. This is awesome, guys. I, I love this shit. This is awesome. I, I'm losing all my forces because you guys fucking suck. <laughs> yeah, I love that scene. Let's So, the Katamaru, I don't want to spend too much time on a storyline. It is one of my favorite stories. Katsuhiro? So. Katsuhiro. Yeah, you still fucked it up. <laughs> Katsu, Katsuhiro. Katamaru. Katamura. <laughs> he gets, like, bolstered by some blood angels and sanguineous. Really cool moment. Mm -hmm. He... Fights one of the last survivors. He finds out that the Alpha Legion operatives are Alpha Legion operatives. And then miraculously survives by making it just in time for the doors to close as the last fenders make their way through the uh, Gate of Eternity. Yep. Um, and Angron's like slaughtering people <laughs> as they're running in. Like, can you imagine? <laughs> you have like, <laughs> you have like a big speaker. All right, everyone. <laughs> come in and you're looking at well, the my field favorite and there's like, Angron he's, he's like you got three minutes fucking run <laughs> <laughs> let's go let's go <laughs> get there uh, so he, he makes it out um, and at the end of the book he has this really cool moment where he's he's being helped by the Imperial Fist he's like wait a minute the Alpha Legion and then they just put him out like they just knock him out um, yep from, yeah because you see the operative who's like He's been with him like this whole the whole story is the sergeant of mm -hmm. his platoon, I guess. He's not the he's like the second in command. That he got like yeah, semi -promoted. promoted. Yeah, but um, he was like a former soldier. Is what he was saying. He was a sniper. Find out he's a Alpha Legion operative with the other lady. Like they kind of became friends, and then at the end of the book, he's called a different name. And he's like. Wait a minute, that's not right. And then he gets knocked out. Yeah. So, well, he gets he makes it back, and he he doesn't get knocked out by someone. He gets like they like he's knock him out. sedatives. Yeah. They put like <laughs> the, it, the imperial fist do. He's like, oh, that fucking. Ugh. <laughs> so the story ends. I'm so sleepy. So, um, really cool story there. Love to see the Alpha Legion part of it. 
the highlights of that were definitely like in the death guard attack and everyone starts dying of disease for the next like week <laughs> yeah. like they go deep into like people dying of like the worst shit yeah um, yeah like being in gas masks and shit and he's like i'm covered in my own blood it's like i can take someone else's shit but it's like poison so i ain't touching that the gas mask part was really cool yeah or like people are struggling on the ground to get gas masks on yeah and he's like i don't know if mine's working we're about to find <laughs> out though <laughs> um so that was a cool one but yeah horace let's go to horace here horace is having a really hard time because apparently the emperor is preventing the demon primarchs from landing and everyone is being a bitch about it yeah also it's such like a weird concept Mm -hmm. like all right look i got all the primarchs but now that they're super strong demons if they get on terra they will burst into flames and die because the emperor's might is so powerful as he's holding close the gate that's stopping billions and billions of demons from coming in. I think the concept is silly, but I like what it does in the story because it makes it seem like even though they're super powerful demon primarchs, they're also kind of pathetic in the sense that they can't even like walk. Like they're restricted. Like yeah. they traded things to get the power that they have. So I yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, they, fucking kill all their soldiers so they should be handicapped anyway <laughs> so let's talk about each of the primarchs here and we can do it from the perspective of horus is gone from normal to most fucked up <laughs> well horus is gone so abaddon makes his way to the room before horus does and they're all sitting there on um telegraph 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 <laughs> telegram. carrier pigeons actually <laughs> we got something in from fulgrim <laughs> he says angron eat my ass <laughs> wait we're getting something from angron <laughs> uh so, so they're hologram. they're project hologram <laughs> projections <laughs> um and abaddon walks in the room trying to because all of the uh primarchs are sp- fighting amongst each other and Hamdan's like this is stupid let me go say shit so he yeah. points each and every one of them out it's fucking great yeah I love him he, he just shits on all of them and he's right and I mean it's all about things I talked about earlier but what I love too is like this whole time like Angron's like fucking screaming like just fucking let me land let me fucking kill shit blood for the blood god and they're like they just fucking mute him <laughs> 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 Angron's arch nemesis, the mute button. He's not. He's not an admin on the hologram. <laughs> Someone's like, "Yeah, that was a good call. That was a good call, yeah, but on <laughs> boom." They let Fulgrim talk, but Angron's going on mute. That's fucking great. <laughs> Just imagine Angron in a business meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I'm imagining the demon too. And like whole demon form is like a like a tie. Let me kill it. Somebody mute that guy. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> <my> fucking <laughs> ears. <laughs> That's the guy that fucking replies all over email. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> he writes caps in all of his email messages. <laughs> Every Urgent. goddamn corporate email. <laughs> we need to respond immediately. <laughs> Is the one that says, hey guys, make sh- fucking put your stuff on mute. <laughs> it's great. Uh, so Abaddon makes fun of Angron. He makes fun of Fulgrim. But interestingly, he also makes fun of Porto Rabo. Porto Rabo as a character in the siege has shifted a lot for me to being much more of a whiny bitch. Yeah, it's which sucks because like in Angel Exterminatus is very is like this Wilson Fisk character, right? He's this like badass, yes. like mobster feel type of guy. You get that in Talarn too. Yeah, and I was just like, uh, I did like a lot of work, so I should get some fucking credit. He's all about the credit. Like it's he's become obsessed with like being recognized. He's become obsessed with being acknowledged, and this is what's crazy. He's like, right? Like, he is the fucking person that has figured this whole thing out. Yeah, he's done a lot of work. 
Most of it. He's the but only like, one <laughs> that's doing anything. Do, like, don't do that. Like, yeah. don't be that guy. But I guess he, the, like, the whole point of poor Rabo is, like, he's always been the guy not to say anything. And now he's going to say it. And I'm like, I don't know, dude. Like, just be glad you're not a snake demon thing. Like, fucking. <laughs> <laughs> His perfume is so strong that it makes people fuck themselves to death. That guy's a fucking mop. <laughs> like, I'm like, be happy with where you're at. I think we can all be satisfied with the fact that you took Pluto. Like, that's cool. Like, you don't need a pat on the back from Horace, who's like juiced up on Chaos God stuff. <laughs> like, if I or Magnus, who's literally non existent, living in corporal form all the time. <laughs> yeah. Like, if I was in poor Rob's position, I'd be like, so, um, I'm going to lay siege to Terra. It'd be cool if you guys can join, but if not, I'll catch you later. <laughs> not really. <laughs> yeah. They're all kind of just doing their own fucking thing anyway. Let's hone in on Angron, though. Because Angron's story gets fucking wild. <laughs> He's just mad. He's mad. He's, He's too real mad. mad. He's like, look, motherfuckers. I'm here. I traveled all the way here. I'm going down there. And I'm going to murder dad. Like, that's it. That's what I'm going to do. Which Everyone's is hilarious. Like, no, 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 no. You're not going to do that. <laughs> the whole point behind this, I mean, none of it makes a lot of sense because ultimately Angron wouldn't be able to do it anyway. But he's like, I don't give a fuck. I'm just going to. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Horus isn't letting him land because he promised that to Mortarion. Yeah. Who is late to arriving. And then when the Death Guard drop, because Mortarian shows up, he's like, I'm fine not being the first one down. I'll let my Death Guard down, though. Thanks for keeping the promise. Bzz, 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 bzz. And that's what he does. Yeah, because they're like, <laughs> yeah, all you demon Primarchs, you're going to burst into flames and die if you like touch Terra. And they're like, oh, we'll see it. And then Aaron's like, oh, I don't fucking care. Let me down. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> fuck. <laughs> blood for the blood god he's still screaming on mute <laughs> it's like, what do you think <laughs> that guy's saying but it's a problem on the conqueror because Angron's so mad and the world eaters are so mad the world eaters are just like fuck it we're gonna go down anyway like who's gonna fucking stop me the answer is Angron because Angron gets mad that they're trying to steal his glory so he goes to the hangers and just slaughters a shit ton of world eaters <laughs> Yeah, human. And they I want like Arn's like, all right, well, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go fucking stop this. Uh close all the gates that like Astartes are in. Fuck the yeah. humans. <laughs> we don't want any more world leaders dying. And Lotara is like, whoa, we don't want humans dying either. Karn's like, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck those guys, but you're cool, Latara. I kind of don't give that. a shit. <laughs> and then Karn goes down there and he fucking just fights Ankron. Well, Latara yeah. and Karn come up with a plan first to teleport yeah, Angron aboard the Night Lord ship onto the maze that was built for Vulcan. Oh, yeah. Which they... is so cool. Karn gets to have a whole conversation with Skryfok. <laughs> yeah, it was hilarious. I want you to share in the glory. Karn's like, what the fuck yeah. ever? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, this is just motherfucking killing everyone. Please take him. <laughs> uh, you can I have whatever love... you want. <laughs> this story is amazing. I love that they took something from like really early on in the series and brought it back and it had relevance and it was interesting and it played a role in the siege like i want to see more of this my favorite part is they're like yeah it'll hold anger on but like he's gonna fucking brute force his way through this which makes no sense but god damn he's gonna do it you know like there's no port of robin design this there's no way he can get through but he will <laughs> <laughs> he's just gonna bust through the walls and you're like oh that wasn't planned for do you think Loken or Vul- Vulcan would have tried that? I thought he did at one point. I don't remember, but I, I guess he didn't make it too far. I don't know. Just gonna punch it hard enough, I guess. But Karn's got a teleport in there. That's when he goes down and fights Angron, and that was a fucking scene. Yeah, he's got the shit kicked out of him too. Well, let me tell you, Karn beats Angron. I mean, he does, yes. But Angron gets to come back to life, which is super unfair. 
<laughs> so it's a little OP. It's wild to me, like, because they went and they fought. And it was like a kind of a creepy, I almost got like a shark feeling to it. Like, like shark in the water. Yeah. Like he goes down and like Angron's like weirdly hiding and talking to him. But Karn can't find him because like they're behind these boxes. <laughs> Some big fucking boxes. <laughs> <laughs> Some big boxes. Line of sight blocking boxes. <laughs> this is obscuring terrain. Karn cannot see Angron. Like you, so, you fucking stole my weapon, you pussy ass bitch. And Karn's like, I guess. At one point, Karn like jumps oh, across boxes. And it literally feels like a shark because like Angron comes up to try to bite him. <laughs> so, fuck. This is crazy. It, it was really intense. Karn plasma pistols him in the face. He dies. Yeah, yeah back like, to life. Burns the fuck out of Karn's arms, too. Teleports uh, Angron to the Night Lord ship. And guess what? Angron brute forces his way out of that fucking maze. <laughs> Says, fuck this shit. I want Terra. My favorite part, I think one of the funniest moments is like, they try to get out of the ship, like Night Lord's like, okay, it's time to land. And Scryvox's like, all right, I'm going. And the rest of the night was like, hey, like, what do we do about Angron? Who? And he's like, I'll figure it fucking out. I'm out. Bye. <laughs> I got to get to the wall, bro. <laughs> I got to go. <laughs> Steven Pervert just plowing his way through the ship. <laughs> like, it kind of seems like your problem. I don't fucking know. <laughs> it's out there. Uh, there is a battle with Scryvok and Rodalorn. Um, obviously, Rodalorn beats the shit out of Scryvok. He beats the fuck out of her. <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah, I Rodalorn. The great Rattoron, you think you could take down the, the pale what is he? Prince? No, it's the not pa- Prince. The Fly pale count? Count. count. The I painted the, count. The painted you think you can call the painted count? I am the so powerful. Rodoron's like, I'm gonna just fuck you. I'm gonna fuck you up. And he does, he just beats the shit out of him. The, you get that like really famous joke line that they have that you see in a lot of of series and stories where like I've heard all about you. I've never heard of you. Who are you? <laughs> I'm the big account. <laughs> he's me. <laughs> I love that like he sends like Scrybox like you eight Terminators go and kill that dreadnought. And like the Terminator leader's like, I don't think we fucking can. <laughs> and then they don't. <laughs> it is true to look like I don't think that's in the fucking books. <laughs> that's not something we can do. I even I love to like Rodaron just beat the shit out of Scryvok and Scryvok was like, okay, okay, Night, Night Lords, please come help, please come help. I'm I, he's really beating my ass, guys. Please help. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out they were all dead to a dreadnought. <laughs> <laughs> the Terminator captain was right; they couldn't do it. <laughs> I crunched the numbers, boss. <laughs> I don't think we're gonna make it out we're, of there. We rolled too many ones, man. I'm sorry. The Blood Angels get plus one attack on the charge. <laughs> I just don't think there's <laughs> enough Terminators for that. Uh, we got nerf, man. We have three up saves now. <laughs> Night Lords don't even have any special rules. We're just basic <laughs> CSM, man. We just die. So, um, Scryfox survives, though. And then gets tortured in the warp. He gets, for, like, yeah, he gets fucking, like, he eats... It's like a demon who becomes him and sends him into the warp, which was the fucking weirdest scene ever. It's like, all right, I'm gonna shove my dick in your throat and I'm gonna transfer my soul into you. It might have been his dick. <laughs> might have been. His See, dick. that's one way to read it, I suppose. <laughs> if, if you were reading it and you got to the part where he shoves a part of his body down his throat, you could assume that it was his dick if that's what you choose to do. <laughs> that's how I chose. Otherwise, I mean, it wasn't his head. That's how I chose to read it. <laughs> well, he just was owned... it his arm? I doubt it. <laughs> if you were going to sub anything in someone's mouth to possess them, what would it be? <laughs> it's probably the dick, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, Scryvox getting tortured in the war for a while. 
Yeah. And by a while, I mean like a few thousand years. It right? was like 6,666 years. How convenient. <laughs> <laughs> Could have rounded that down. <laughs> <laughs> or up, I guess. It's past five. You can round it up a little bit. I don't think Scryvok would like it to be rounded up. I don't think Scryvok has many options anymore. It's true. So um, that's, that's the story there. Um, let's get to the part. Let's go back a little bit to when the Death Guard arrived um, and fight the, the troops outside the wall. They're not alone. They get bolstered. By a force, and it is your favorite moment in the book. The White Scars? The White Scars arrive. It's so fucking cool, too, because, like, you have um, everyone just fucking fighting, and then it's like, the doors are opening. And it's like, all right, well, what's up to happen? And you see a bunch of fucking jet bikes coming out, everyone's fucking screaming fucking war chants and shit. And it's these giant motherfuckers on jet bikes. And like, I just don't know how you can't be hype about that. The White Scars, I'm so hyped about the White Scars. I think they were written so well in this They're series. They're badasses. Honestly, like of all of the legions, the Chris Wright made the White Scars look fucking good. I agree. Salamanders, maybe not so much. <laughs> <laughs> Vulcan looks hey, cool. Where's Vulcan? Where is he? He is on Terra, apparently. He is mentioned. He is finally mentioned. Yes. So we'll, we'll get to that. Uh, but yeah, we had the White Scars come out to fight the Death Guard. The Khan himself is leading the charge. He gets stabbed by a pointy stick, and it's fucking poisonous. Which, I just want to point out, Horus gets stabbed by a pointy stick. He died and had to come back to life. Khan took a pointy stick. Killed some more motherfuckers, then they ripped it out and walked away. I can take some pointy sticks, man. <laughs> He's a little bit more durable than that. Like, oh, you're a little rusty blade. I'm fine. I, I'll go get a tetanus shot. He didn't Horse. even get a tetanus shot. He just fucking worked <laughs> through it. He did. He absorbed Horse needed that blow. more than a tetanus shot. <laughs> Horace has died twice from some pointy sticks. Little bitch. Pathetic. The Khan, he's getting fucking like he's about to die. He's like, hell yeah, like that was fun. Yeah, but then Saint like, came and saved his life. He was like, okay, that's cool too. Like the Khan was fucking ready. Like he was like, this is great. Like let's fucking let's do it. This is like, a good way to go. Damn, these whippersnappers got me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't like super depressed. He was just like, well, I didn't think I'd be like sick while I died, but fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Never felt this before. But yeah, Sanguinius Ooh. comes in and saves the Khan. They're like, yo, we gotta get the fuck out of here. And the Khan's like, wait a minute. I gotta get my bike first. <laughs> Let me grab my bike. It's <laughs> fucking <laughs> <laughs> This is like a great battle moment. the bastards around him. He's like, hold on. I gotta get to the motorcycle. <laughs> get my motorcycle. We've got no time. Have you seen my motorcycle? <laughs> it's got flames. It goes so fast. <laughs> so I painted it like my armor. <laughs> yeah, Con, we know. <laughs> Everyone does that. <laughs> it's super fucking sick. <laughs> uh, I still remember. I still remember. Still, how long ago was this? <laughs> I still remember. <laughs> Never forget. <laughs> Never forget um, Olinor. When the Khan and Fulcrum were debating, oh yeah, the Khan goes, "I heard you do weird things to your ships. I heard you do weird things to your men." <laughs> Such a good fucking line. Demolished Fulcrum right there. You know, <laughs> he was probably talking about the augmentations, but we know. <laughs> oh, we know. We know. <laughs> I heard your men do weird things to you. <laughs> <laughs> so then the torture chamber there. Um, so the Khan, not only does he make this like badass right out, the conversation he has with Dorn when he gets back is my favorite moment. The yeah, Khan's really good. Tough. They're great. So he gets back to Dorn, and Dorn's like, Why the fuck did you do that? No, That's he's not. Bad. Why did you do that? What the fuck 
is wrong with you, you stupid piece of shit? Like, I got a plan, all right? It's all fucking written down. Like, I gave you a post-it note three weeks ago. Khan goes, fuck your plan. <laughs> he really did. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, listen, dude, I don't hide behind walls. I go fuck shit up. Um, and so he he basically says, I went out there to get data on the stuff. So there you go. There's information. Now you know how to destroy it. And Dorn's like, we already had that, kind of, but that was super sick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was super cool. It was part of my equation. Kind of like, well, now it's confirmed. You're welcome. Now that thing is no longer a variable. Yep. It's a constant. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, bitch. Which I guess is still a variable. Whatever, whatever. Yeah, he's like, no, don't fucking do that again. Kind of like, "Mm, I might actually. I was, I was about to go right now. (laughs) Like, bro, I got my bike back. Like, we're good. We have so many bikes. And have you ever tried to like ride a bike in a city? It's like you're turning all the fucking. We got to get the bikes out there. (laughs) We got to use the bikes correctly. And the door, there's there's too many streets out here. So it's like enough about the fucking bikes. It's like that's my life is my bike, man. I gotta ride. <laughs> gotta get the just, open air. You don't understand what it's like until you really feel the wind in your hair, man. The fucking freedom. <laughs> the so it's like we got 17 walls, 18 defense cannons, 18,000 legion to starties, 20 million infantry shoulders right here on this wall. And the cons like. Where are the bikes? <laughs> <laughs> How many of those you've got? <laughs> Where are the bikes? Where are they going? We're going to put them out here. <laughs> so it's like, no. <laughs> this is the only place I can run around. <laughs> Regardless, though, he does make the statement where it's like, all of these other cities around Earth, which is also a question I had since day one, Yes, <laughs> are they're getting invaded apparently not blown up like Boris doesn't want to waste ammunition on these on other cities <laughs> on, on america it's all about nepal <laughs> no america um but the khan is like no we have to go help them dorn's like they're fodder and the cons this is what i love about the scene the khan's like how are we supposed to build the imperium if we abandon the imperium and Dorn is like, that's a question I asked myself five years ago, and I had to abandon the Imperium. And the concept well, his thing you... was the Emperor is the Imperium. Yeah. But we have to think about this. Like Dorn throughout the entire series struggled. We saw so many points of views of like them tearing down some sort of important thing, and Dorn being like, I feel really shitty about this, but it needs to happen. And so many times throughout the heresy, Dorn has been like, we're sacrificing so much of the Imperium to defend it from Boris. Like the Imperium that we're going to have in the end is not going to be the same Imperium. We get that when like Malkador sends assassins out. He's like, we don't fight war that way. Malkador's like, well, now we do. He's like, this yeah. is not the same Imperium. He basically had to decide that sacrificing the Imperium was good. Like that was okay to defeat Boris. And the Khan in this argument is just like, you were fucking wrong. <laughs> and I'm going to go save the Imperium. And it gave me chills the way he talked about it. He's like, I have to go save the people because people are the Imperium. Thorne's like, I'm giving up on that. And he kind of said, you should not have. And you cannot stop me from going yeah. because my bikes are faster than you are. <laughs> I am so fucking fast. You don't even understand. God, you shouldn't, you shouldn't go beyond the walls. Yeah, try and fucking stop me. <laughs> <laughs> bitch. slide around this bike we're gonna do uh great scene it, i almost i almost teared up it's because you're a bitch i read that the cons like giving the speech about like what the imperium means why humans need to be defended why dorn's given up on like the good part of it everything's being abandoned i'm like fuck like he's totally right the con might be the best prime arc like He's Maybe favorite. not most powerful, but he might be my favorite Primark. Like, the dude mine. is, dude's great. I agree. The White Scars in general, just great fucking um, legion. Unfortunately, I I will never build the White Scars because I know you've laid claim. 
So I will have to <laughs> make the salamanders. <laughs> and I will have all of them die, but Vulcan is on <laughs> all the time. Uh, so um, that was a great scene. Um, what were some of the other scenes that we mentioned? Uh, I, really I think like? we should talk about the conversation of <clears throat> the Primarchs with Malkador <laughs> talking about like the forces they have, finding out how Vulcan is a fact alive and on Terra. This kills me. <laughs> did you ever read that tweet? I did. From Do you know what it said? Haley. Yeah. Here okay, I'll... so let, let's it? talk about it real quick before we read it. This is a problem we have for, for viewers who may be listening to just the siege part of it. Nick Kime wrote an amazing novel called Old Earth. It was great. Everyone hates it, though, because it's a Salamander's novel, which means they didn't read it. They just read all the other <laughs> Salamander's novels, which weren't great. Vulcan was okay, but Old Earth was phenomenal. In Old Earth, it is established that Vulcan makes it back to Terra. And in doing so, he actually has a conversation with Dorne. And the timeline of this makes no sense because authors <laughs> later on, like one, never wrote the correct sequence of the Primarchs arriving or leaving Terra. And two, never acknowledged. Vulcan's presence was never acknowledged on Terra until right here, book two of the siege. And it is incredibly frustrating because Dorn is shocked when Malkador says Vulcan is on Terra. And Dorn goes, what the fuck? But Dorn already knows that Vulcan is on Terra because he had a whole conversation with him in Old Earth. So, yeah, so I, have, I have two tweets here, okay? Okay, I'm ready. So, the well, person background that... real quick. Real yep. quick background. We thought this was a huge oversight by the authors. Yes. Raptor, one of our Discord listeners, showed us like, hey, there are tweets out there that justify or attempted to justify why Vulcan was never yeah. mentioned and why Dorn reacted shocked to Vulcan being there. So I'll read the original tweet and the reply to both of these. The first mm -hmm. one. So in Lost in the Dam, Sanguinius and the Khan are all surprised that Vulcan lives. Why is Dorne surprised? Dorne spoke with him during the book Old Earth when Vulcan arrived on Terra out of the webway prior to the beginning of the siege. Vulcan even hugged the man. Now Haley replied, Dorne's playing it cool. The knowledge of his arrival was kept secret from the others. The second one. Actually, this is actually just... Okay, so Guy Haley... Blah, 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 okay. And then someone said, slightly confused by Dorn not knowing about Vulcan, given what happened in Old Earth. Also, would love to know which Primarch was aware of the warp. And Guy Haley replied, ask yourself, is Dorn surprised by a Vulcan being alive, or is he surprised by something else? Also, the Primarch who was told is hinted at in various places, and outright named in the relevant game-related book, albeit in a some-say way, but I'll not name him here. Spoilers. What? Okay. So All right. There's the part two parts where they're asking about um, who knew about the chaos gods in the warp. So only one Primarch knew about the chaos gods in the warp. Yes. It has Do to be Magnus, know? right? No, definitely wasn't. I feel like it has to be Magnus. I mean, Magnus knows about the chaos deities because he fucking made a deal with one. We know it's definitely not Horus. No, not Horus, obviously. I'm going to eliminate, I don't know, some random names. Let's say uh, Portoravo, Corax, Conrad Kurz. Definitely not them. <laughs> no, not obviously not Sanguinius. Obviously not Dorn. Yeah. Um, not, what's his face? Lehman Russ. I think it's between. It could have been Lehman. I don't think so, though. Lehman has a lot of weird knowledge about the he... shit that goes on in the war. He does, but I'm I not going to eliminate Lehman yet. Sure, Here's the not... people I'm going to throw up for like, it's optional. Magnus, Lehman, the Khan, 
But the cow was in the room. He was in the room. He was also shocked. So probably not the con. Probably not. It's just the storm seers are really interesting. Yeah. But okay, so let's say Magnus and Lehman. I'll throw out. I don't think it's the lion. The lion seems so ignorant of everything. But maybe I could see the lion. And there's like a Definitely theory that the reason the lion sent back Luther was because of the chaos taint of Caliban. Potentially. So I could see it be the lion, Lehman, Magnus. Wargar found out through other people, so it was not yeah, Wargar. Because he got upset. Yeah. Who else who, who else are we missing here? Definitely not Fulgrim. Uh, yeah, Fulgrim not, was not told. Not Ferris Manus. Manus? Probably not. not I can't Vulcan. imagine. Mortarian is an interesting one. True. Mortarian? I don't think so. I don't think it was Mortarian. Mortarian, we probably wouldn't have had to go through demonology and all those short stories. Let's Google it. Maybe there's an answer. What's your guess? Uh, My guess is Magnus. I'm going to guess Lehman Russ. Okay. The lion is the most likely. Hmm. Hey, someone. Oh, this is a weird one. Their uh, champion rankings. And they are as bad at spellers as we are. This is an interesting one. Listen to this real quick. Hyros Baitweaver admits that he tried to turn the lion multiple times. But was ignored. And there's a lot of quotes. Yada yada yada. Yeah, so apparently the lion, which is crazy because he's still so dumb. Dumb bitch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what was the tweet we got? Uh it was champion rankings. Mm-hmm. Wait, we can go. Let's finish the book and then we'll be okay. like, we'll go to that. Jumping all over the place here. Yeah, so in my opinion, going back to the Vulcan piece, those two answers are two different answers, by the way. The two answers he gave about them being shocked about Vulcan. Yeah. The first answer he gave was, oh, Doran was just trying to, he was just pretending to be shocked. And the second answer he gave was, Doran was shocked by something else. Not the same answer. There, this is a hundred percent oversight. Yeah, I agree. It kills me. It kills me. Listen, these authors are phenomenal authors. But come on, like don't don't like make up some stuff. Just be like, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> like we forgot. Like it's just kind of it's fine, you know. Like if like if Cram would have been like, yeah, I probably would have changed the timeline and um. Outcast dead. <laughs> that would have been fine. That would have been okay. Don't be like, oh, I'm going to make another story that talks about how we held Magnus's war pulse back for two years. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah that, that's totally what happened. Mm-hmm. All right. So, anything else from the book that you can recall? The primary story of the book is they're attempting to besiege the eternity gate um and it fails uh Scryvok was kind of the main person that attempted to do that and that failed we continue to see abaddon have less and less faith in horus but we also get some really interesting information about horus and the fact that he's not actually trying to defeat the emperor before gilman arrives yeah which is weird apparently horus is dying Got stabbed too hard by too many sticks. <laughs> too many sticks. <laughs> Chaos gods were like, we're trying to keep you alive, dude. 
you got to stay away from pointy objects. <laughs> <laughs> just be like um, Abaddon. Instead of absorbing the blow, catch the bullet. He died, actually, no, three times from pointy sticks. We've miscalculated the number <laughs> of pointy sticks that have killed or his. Um, so I think it's kind of interesting. Uh, our, uh, Horace is on his way to death, and there's nothing he can do. That's why he spends so much time in the warp. He's trying to preserve his energy. Yeah. Like, that's cool. That's kind of sure. cool. Um, see, I'm, I'm definitely missing a lot, like 100%. Um, we still don't know where Magnus is or what Magnus is doing. Nope. Um, what's Layak was around a lot. He's like sucking Abaddon's dick, kind of, and Abaddon's <laughs> like, please stop. Please stop sucking my dick. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Layak is like <laughs> not subtly dropping hints. Like, it's the least subtle hint dropping I've ever seen where he's like, <laughs> so like, just saying. Let's say if Horace died, you know, maybe I'm not like, I don't want to say it like directly because that would be like a traitor because that's not, I'm not saying I'm trying to, anyway, what I'm trying to say is if the chaos gods needed a new champion, I'm just like, I don't, I don't want to, it's like, you might be, I don't know, I'm just throwing it out there, you might be the guy, I didn't say anything. (laughs) <laughs> Abaddon is like, dude, you are so fucking weird. <laughs> yeah, fucking leave me alone. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. He's like, I talked to the Chaos Gods. We like you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it might be a little hot. Like, I'm, I'm kind of into you a little bit. I don't know. I think I'm going to do whatever I can, whatever I can in my power to follow you around for the next year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> and piss you off. And it's like, I don't even who the fuck are you, man? <laughs> <laughs> um, we keep getting a lot of hints that he's not Erebus. I I hope they reveal Lilac's identity. Because I hope it's not just like I think we're supposed it? to find out in the first wall. Okay. Do you know? Have you read it? I'm only nine chapters deep. Okay. Well, I'd be interested because I'm a little over halfway and I have not seen my likes of Dimity. Um, they keep saying it's not Erebus. But in my mind, I'm like, who the fuck would it be? Like, I don't I imagine like Erebus and Lorgar just like sitting on their like own planet pouting. Well, Corferion. Corferion is... shows up too. They're all just sitting <laughs> there around Corferion pouting. Shows up. <laughs> <laughs> well, fuck it. We'll make our own church. We'll have... <laughs> Oh, and it'll have strippers and blackjack. <laughs> Corferia, Horus was never even building a church. <laughs> <laughs> what were we doing? <laughs> Obviously, you have to have a church. <laughs> we build the church. The church makes the guns. And then we use the guns to build another church by killing ourselves. <laughs> it's fucking simple math. <laughs> Come on. Oh, man. Yeah, so great book. <laughs> Very good. Um, enjoyment level this is probably eight and a half to nine for me. Yeah, I think it was a nine. I it's really hard to compare these to the horse heresy novels, like I said. Like I yeah. love this book. Would I read it over first heretic? Probably not, but it's so different because this is yeah. like a giant event where first heretic follows a story. Yeah. Of Corf or not Corf of Argal Tall. Yeah. So, like, this is all over the place. So it's cooler in different ways. Like, this one, you're getting culmination of all kinds of things. Cool battles, cool characters, cool speeches. First Heretic is, like, a fucking journey. Yes. So, very hard to compare. But so far, this one has been my favorite. Yep, I agree. Um, the tweet. I let me share my screen. If you get... It'd be really great if our other co-hosts would give me access to do things. i feel powerful when you have to ask <laughs> Look in, I, it's so sexy when you make me big <laughs> <laughs> all right so we were tweeted and asked our champion rankings they said harris elijah 
We've had prior bark tier rankings, heresy book rankings. We have done a champion ranking. It was a long time ago. And of course we slobbed on some Sevitar knob. Has, yeah, we did. Has anything changed for us for our Heresy Lodge champion rankings? So they have Sigismund in the greatest. We uh-huh. also have Sigismund in S tier with Karn. What does also, that mean? What do you mean? What does that mean? So Sigismund is in two tiers? Maybe like battle wise, like 1v1, they have Sigismund beating Karn. I don't know. I'm also oh, confused by... They're more speller than we are, and that's a 10 out of 10 for us. I'm also incredibly confused by the double Alpharius <laughs> at the bottom. That, I think that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> There's two of them. Alpharius is in the what the fuck tier, and then Alpharius is in the worst tier. <laughs> all right. Let's see if we remember, like know all these people. Uh, so I don't know who Oreo is. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> or, <laughs> Should or, we know who Oreo is? I don't know. So Quinza, that's is that the dude that took off Abaddon's face or Axmon? You told me that was one of the cons. Quinza Khan. Maybe. I don't, I'm pretty so. sure you told me it was Jubal. I thought it was, but apparently it was not. Yeah, because you're fucking wrong. But either way, we could put our own champions in these. Oh no, he fought. I don't know. I don't know. That'd be a great. um, That'd be a really good trivia question. Yeah, I think like how we did it before is we had a champion like we chose for each legion. I'm pretty sure Mm. that's how we did it. Uh, is there anyone missing here that you feel like should be in there? Uh, I would probably put um, fuck, what's his actual name? Bear from oh. Bjorn. Uh, I, I, I put Bjorn over Skarsenson, probably. Yeah, I agree with as that. As the champion. Um, you don't have a mitt in here? Well, they have, they have Rotteron, though. I think if you yeah, put yeah, probably better. Yeah, um, I would probably put Yasugi over Kinza. Yeah, I mean, I, don't, I, don't I would say that's unfair, is. but Arvin's in there, so I don't know who Orfeo is either. Let me see. That it's might the, be a person that we haven't met yet. It sounds like an ultramarine name to me, which they already have Thiel. The, the Ultramarines, he is an Ultramarine. There's like nothing. So if I was thinking like each Allegiant, uh, greatest, I'd probably still keep Sevatar because I would slob on some Sevatar. No, S- I agree. S tier, I would probably actually, I don't even, I mean, Sigismund is a badass, but we haven't seen much of Sigismund. I'd put I Karn would, and Sigismund up there. I'd put Karn, Sigismund, and I don't know. I mean, like, hmm. I'll tell you the ones I really struggle to rank. I really struggle to rank Armin. I really struggle to rank Garo. I feel like their power is just so. Based on the book. Yeah, like who, <laughs> like Garo just beats greater demons. Like that's pretty fucking powerful. Yeah, that's pretty fucking powerful. So yeah, I think S tier for me is like, uh, I think it's Sevatar, and yep. then I think it goes Sigismund Karn, in S tier. I think A tier Abaddon. I love that choice, but I'm also gonna add Garo to A tier in my opinion. Garo, I'd probably put Rider on here too. Really, you think so? Probably. I mean, he's well known. If I had to put someone in A tier, someone else in A tier, I'd actually put Sherikin in A tier over over Raldon. So I, the only reason I put Rotter on here is because he's famous, right? He's supposed to be a bad motherfucker. 
I mean, Shuriken's not famous, and that's what makes him powerful. No one knows who Shuriken is. Maybe. Maybe Lucius is actually a bitch. Lucius is really hard to rank because I honestly believe that Sigismund, Karn, Abaddon, Savitar, we know Shuriken. I think Rautalon would beat up Lucius. Loken has beaten Lucius. I feel like Yasugi could. Yeah, so I think B tier for me is, is Rautalon. Wait, actually, I think I had I put Yasugi A tier. He's a psyker. Good fighter. I think B tier for me is going to be Rautalon, or then where the psychers live in the B tier, which is kind of crazy. Um, I'd put I don't know who Oreo is. I can't I can't rank Oreo. Um, <laughs> I think that's probably all I put in the B tier. I think C tier we have Loken, Argal Tall. Would Loken Lucius. even be your representative? I mean Loken should even be here, right? Because if we're only doing one per legion. He beat Lucius. He did, but he's he went he's not the champion of the Little Wolves. Yeah, Abaddon's definitely the guy. Yeah, I Fair I enough. wouldn't even have him on the list. Um, and C tier, I'd put I'd Lucius. Put, yeah, I put Lucius Corswain. Um, I don't know anything about Corswain. I have not seen Corswain fight anyone except for Sevatar, and he got his ass beat, and he had like two other Dark he, Angels with him. Well, fucking uh, what's his face? God damn. No. The, the Primark. <laughs> he fought a Primark? Uh, his own Primark. <laughs> he fought and the Lion? The buried... No, not Horse Away. Oh, shit. I was thinking of Typhon. I was looking at Typhon. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? When did Horse Away fought the Lion? The Lion would have just beheaded him. Yeah, I mean... Thinking about fighting. Fair Horse Away. I mean, he's probably pretty strong, right? My D tier is going to be Course Wayne Bear. You put Bjorn in the D tier? I do. Like I think Bjorn's great, but I don't think he's gonna beat a lot of these guys. Like I don't think he's a D tier fighter, but when it comes to ranking these guys. Honestly, I think I put Arm in D tier. I'm gonna leave Armin in the B tier where he belongs. <laughs> You have a hard time fighting someone who's shooting mind bullets at you. Yeah, I mean... Sorry, I can hear my baby screaming. I can't hear your baby screaming. I think you're good. I think it's like fun screaming. Oh, that's good. Yeah. She's she's got her voice. Oh, that's nice. Have a voice. Sooner or later, <laughs> she'll be doing her her champion rankings. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to do this without already like having it written out. I think mm-hmm. what we should have next week, part of the, at the end of the preview, we write out our twenty or eighteen. We write out our I, eighteen and rank it better. Some of the legions are really hard to like come up with someone for. Yeah, like I, I, I le- we might have set different eighteen. Yeah, like I legitimately think I would struggle to come up with someone from like. The Raven Guard? No, we have Sharikin. Uh Iron Warriors. Kruger. Kruger, maybe. <laughs> he's, gonna, um, he's gonna blow some stuff up. Honestly, maybe the it'll... artist is the Salamanders. Yeah, there's like no one from the Salamanders. Lumion question mark. <laughs> Lumion. Honestly, like word bears, I would probably pick uh what's his face? Argyle uh, Tall. No. The sniper guy. Oh, Narek. Yeah, Narek. I'd probably pick. That's Narek. a really good choice. Narek's a good one. I who so okay, who would you pick for um, Alpha Legion? Alpha Arius. Yeah, Alpha Arius. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I'm pretty sure that person's always just kind of kind of be at the what the fuck dear. <laughs> who are you? <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I love this. This is great. The, what the fuck here? The worst here. I love that. Double Alpharius. Um, yeah, I don't think there's another Legion that I really struggle with. I don't like 
the space wolves like bear like that's okay he's not like a i don't see a lot of fighting like accolades of bear typhus like no one gives a shit about typhus like yeah but typhus fought fucking mortarion because he was made of flies it's easier to (laughs) fight someone when you literally can't die fair he knows those psyker those are just my thoughts all right so we'll be back next week but that better tears we'll have our r18 ready and prepared probably yeah we'll try and copy this yep um and make something of it. Tweet, tweet. We'll tweet you back. We we'll got tweet. you. We'll tweet, tweet, tweet you back. We'll tweet you back. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. That is it for our review of the Lost and the Damned. As always, hit us up on our socials. You can find us on Discord. Find that pin to our Twitter at Heresy Lodge. You can email us at theheresylodge at gmail.com. Check us out on YouTube at the Heresy Lodge. We have merch. Check it out. Buy yourself something nice. If you play Tacticus, check out the Pants of Horus guys at discord.gg slash Pants of Horus. We'll be back next week with our preview of the first wall. Bye, Gav. No, not Gav Thorpe. Um, oh, no. I don't have it with me. Shit. Uh, uh, Guy Haley? No. No, Guy Haley just did this last one. Let me find so John this. French? Nope, John French did the first book. Where the fuck is my Kindle app on my phone? Like, there wasn't that much alcohol in this. Gav Thorpe. It is Gav Thorpe. I was right on the first time. There we go. All right. Well, we'll do that. First of all, Gav Thorpe. We'll see you then, guys. You have a good weekend. And hopefully, for our Americans, you had a good fourth. Absolutely.